Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's been a very, very long time since my last video and since we last met, but these past few years have been very eventful. I graduated university and work full time ever since, so I haven't had much time to craft. But crafting has always been my happy place. It's a space where I can just create things that sparks me joy, and I do love creating videos. So. I will try my best whenever I can to create content for you guys. But if you stuck around for this long, I just want to say thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So for today's video, I was inspired by Barbie movies because I watched them growing up and I always thought the food in it was so appetizing to me and I thought why not replicate it out of clay. So, we will be replicating some foods uh, from this specific screenshot from Barbie Fairytopia and the Magic of the Rainbow. Not only will I show you how to make the cupcakes and cakes Bibble seem to be fond of, but also the entire flower tea set behind him. So let's begin! We're going to need a needle tool or a flat blending tool. A mold maker, I'm using Amazing Mold Putty and some scrap polymer clay. Take your clay and shape it into a tapered cylinder or a cupcake base. Then taking your needle tool or flat blending tool, indent some lines around the cupcake base to make the cupcake liner ridges. Once done, bake according to your brand's polymer clay package instructions. Next, take equal parts of the A and B sides of the mold maker and combine it into one. Then after baking the cupcake base, press the base onto the mold and wait 20 minutes to cure. Take the cupcake base out of the mold and now you have a mold. So take some blue polymer clay and press it into the mold. Then freeze it for around 15 minutes. Once frozen, pop it off and you have a cupcake base. Take some chalk pastels and a flat brush, then use darker blue to shade the indentations of the cupcake base. This is to give the cupcake base more dimension and more realism. Well, even though it's a Barbie movie, um, we still want to give it a little bit of uh, depth. <laughs> Once done, you're going to bake it. For the top part of the cupcake, we're going to take the scrap cupcake base that we just had and wrap it in cling wrap. Then take some pink clay and you're going to shape it into a giant teardrop and place it onto the cupcake base. I'm using this technique so just in case the top of the cupcake doesn't look right, I can still take it off of the cupcake base and try another one without ruining the actual cupcake base. Once you're happy with the top shape of your cupcake, you're going to take it off and then using liquid clay, I'm using Fimo, assemble the bottom and top part and bake. I have sculpted all three of the cupcakes that can be found within the screenshot as they are just the same shape but with different colors. So moving forward, I will show you guys just how to decorate each of the cupcakes. Now continuing with the pink cupcake, take a dotting tool and a small brush. Take some white and pink acrylic paint, combine them together to make a light pink color and just paint on the drizzle on the cupcake. It should look like this and now we're going to continue to make the flower that goes on top of the cupcake. You're going to need some grey, lighter grey and white polymer clay, a clay blade and then a rolling pin or any cylindrical object that can flatten things out. Now take your white clay and flatten it out into a flat circle or oval. <laughs> Now using your blade, cut it into a rectangle. We want to leave one side of the rectangle a little bit curved so that the cross section will have a curved side for the petals. Then take your lighter grey and wrap your white clay around it and cut off the excess with your blade. 
Now take your darkest gray color and wrap our clay around that and cut off the excess. Afterwards, flatten it out with a rolling pin to about two millimeters in thickness. And using your blade, you're going to cut a thin piece. And that will be our petal. To assemble, we're going to need six petals. And for the center of the flower, we're going to need a small ball of yellow clay. I forgot to film this part, but I'm using Fimo liquid polymer clay to act as a glue when attaching all of these petals. And when attaching all of the petals, I made sure that the drizzle we initially painted still shows. Once done, just bake the cupcake. Take the cupcake that you've already baked that has a blue top and a pink bottom. Take some white acrylic paint and we are going to paint the drizzle on top of the cupcake. Let's now make the flower that goes on top of the cupcake. So, you're going to need yellow clay, a lighter yellow clay, and mix some yellow clay and white clay to create a sand color. Take the sand colored clay or the lightest clay and once again create a flat circle. Then using your blade, cut it into a rectangle. This is very similar to the pink cupcake flower. Next, take your lighter yellow clay and wrap your lightest color clay around it. Then take the darkest yellow color and wrap that around it. Cut off your excess and then using a rolling pin you are once again going to flatten it out to about 2 millimeters in thickness. Then take your blade and we're going to cut out a slice and you've got your petal. Assembling time! Okay, now we're going to need 6 petals as you can see on the screen. And once again, using Fimo liquid polymer clay, I am using that to act as a glue to attach all of the petals onto the cupcake. Once again, remember to try and arrange the petals so that the white drizzle we painted on earlier can still be visible on the cupcake. Then I am flicking off the petal or curving the petal upwards so that it will create a little bit more dimension or to make it seem like the flower is blooming. Take a ball tool and create a round indentation at the center of the flower. Then place a small yellow ball of clay at the center and bake. For the last cupcake, take your already baked cupcake, take a dotting tool and liquid polymer clay, I'm using Sculpey, then take some white and yellow acrylic paint and mix the paint together with the liquid polymer clay to create a light yellow frosting. Then apply the liquid clay frosting onto the cupcake, creating a drizzle effect. Once done, take a ball of red clay as the cherry on top and place it on top of the cupcake and bake. The two layered cakes are just the same but just in different colors, so I'm going to exemplify by making the vanilla one. So take beige and light blue clay, flatten it out, and make sure that the beige clay is a lot thicker than the light blue clay. Using a circle cookie cutter, cut three beige clay circles and three light blue circles. Take a dotting tool and create texture on the side of all three beige clay circles to make it look like a cake. Once done, just assemble.
Then take some more light blue clay, roll it out into a snake, and we're going to coil it to make a mountain of frosting. This step is completely optional, but I'm using a small blending tool and blending in the seams of the frosting to make it look a little bit more realistic. Even though it's a Barbie movie, but I really like the effect of a smooth frosting. <laughs> Then place the frosting on top of the cake and bake. Next, use a glaze of your choice and glaze on top of the frosting and you are going to place some blue glitter on it to make the sprinkles. Similarly, for the chocolate and pink frosting cake, once it's baked, you're going to apply some glaze and sprinkle in some dark pink glitter for the sprinkles. Take some tan or beige polymer clay and shape it into a taper cylinder or like the cupcake base shape or just a general pudding like shape. Then take a toothbrush and texture our cake to make it look more realistic. Take a dotting tool and we're going to create even more texture so that there's a variety of texture on the cake. Next, using different shades of brown chalk pastels, we're going to create some shading on the cake to make it look like it's been baked. To make the frosting, once again use Sculpey Liquid Polymer Clay, white and yellow acrylic and mix the paint together with the liquid polymer clay to create the light yellow frosting. Then just place the frosting on top of the cake and create a drizzling effect on the sides. Now take some dark blue clay for the blueberries and create some indentations to make the detail of the blueberry. Then place all of the delicious looking blueberries on top of the cake and once finished, just bake it. For this cake, take some tan or beige clay and mix a little bit of a pink so that it becomes a pink peachy beige and shape it into once again a pudding-like shape or a tapered cylinder. And then take your toothbrush and create some texture on the cake once again. Take your dotting tool and once again create extra texture for the cake. For the frosting, take some light pink clay, roll it into a snake, and using an X-Acto knife or a clay blade, cut some thin slices. And then using your ball tool, place the slices on top of each other, forming a border around the cake. Next, for the flower at the center of the cake, take six balls of light pink clay and you're going to place the balls at the center of the cake, creating a circle.
take a needle tool and indent some lines onto the circles to add texture to your flower. Then place a small ball of red clay onto the center of the flower. For the last element of this cake, take some darker pink clay and roll them out into tiny circular balls and arrange them all around the flower to create a border. This is definitely my favorite cake out of the picture because it just seems so pretty and I'm very curious about what flavor it is. Afterwards, you're just going to bake it. Moving on to the flower tea set, you're going to need a lot, and I do mean a lot of light pink clay. And so I'm going to show you how to make the petals, which is going to be in all of the elements of the tea set. So roll out a thick snake and cut them into equal slices. Then take one slice, roll it into a ball, and then roll it into a teardrop shape. Next, I'm using this petal making tool, but you can also use the back of a brush or anything cylindrical and flatten out the petal. Then using this tool or a needle tool, indent some lines onto the petals to create texture. And now you have your petal that will be the basis for all of the tea set elements. So to make the teacups, take a brush and dip the end of the brush into some cornstarch. And you're going to need six petals that you would have already made. So take the first petal and place it at the end of the brush. Then take the second petal and place it on top of the first petal. Once done, take the third petal and you're going to place it on top of the second petal but you're going to tuck it in under the first petal. So now we have three petals that create the inner layer of the teacup flower. Take your fourth petal and place it where two of the petals meet and you're going to do the same for the rest of the two petals. Slide the teacup off of the end of the brush. This is why we use cornstarch so it slides off easier. Take a small ball of light pink clay and press it a little bit, then place the cup on top of that piece of clay to seal off the hole we previously had under the cup. Next, take another small ball of light pink clay and we're going to press it underneath the bottom of the cup. Take a brush and some magenta chalk pastel and now we're going to shade the cup. Using a slightly smaller brush, I'm just also shading the inner parts of the flower. To make the handle of the teacup, we're going to take some light pink clay, roll it into a snake with one side being thicker, and then shape it into a very fancy S shape. Then take some wire and cut it into around one centimeter using a wire cutter and insert it onto the thicker side of the S shape using liquid polymer clay. It should look like this and then you're just going to bake it for a few minutes. 
Once the handle has been baked, you're going to take some liquid polymer clay and place it onto the metal part of the handle, then attach the handle onto the teacup, like so. Now we're going to create the feet that's made out of a ring of leaf shape at the bottom of every element of the tea set. So take some teardrop clay, flatten it out, and using a needle tool or this blending tool, make an indentation at the center. Then take some Fimo liquid polymer clay and place some at the bottom of the teacup. And now you're going to attach the leaf shape that you just created and bend it slightly to make it look more curved. Now repeat that so that it goes all around the bottom of the cup. And it should look like this. This will be done for all of the elements of the tea set. But take some of the same magenta chalk pastel and shade it. Once done, it's time to bake it. This step is optional, but I wanted the teacup to be filled, so I'm making a purple tea, but I also now realize that a butterfly pea flower tea that's a very gorgeous blue color would have also fitted the theme of this. So take any colored clay of your any color desired drink, place it into the cup and take some Fimo liquid polymer clay, then mix it in with any color chalk pastel and place that into the cup. Afterwards, just bake and you have a filled teacup. Also, unfortunately, I forgot to film this, but there is a leaf plate that goes with the teacup. So all you need is take some lime green clay, uh, shape it into a teardrop, flatten it out, and then using a ball tool or needle tool, just create indentations for the leaf texture and bake. To make the sugar container, take some light pink clay and shape it into a teardrop. Then we're going to need six petals. When assembling, we're going to need one inner layer made up of three petals and one outer layer made up of three petals. So place your first petal on the teardrop and place your second petal overlapping the first petal. Then take your third petal and overlap it on the second petal. Now my petal wasn't wide enough, but it should be tucked underneath the first petal. And now for the outer layer, place the petal in where two petals meet. Then press your petals towards the center because the overall shape should be like a bulb of flower and not like it's blooming. Get some magenta chalk pastel in a brush and once again we're going to shade it. To make the two handles that goes on both ends of the sugar container, take some lime green clay, roll it into a thin snake and then you're going to twist it to create a twisty effect. <laughs> and then cut it. Then shape it into an S-like shape. And you're going to make two of them and bake it. The lid is a purple flower, so take some purple clay and you're going to roll it out into a thick snake. And using your blade, you're going to cut it into equal slices. Then shape those slices into a teardrop. Once again, flatten the teardrop out. And then using a needle tool, you're going to indent some lines to create texture for the petals. To assemble, we're going to need six petals and a small ball of purple clay. Shape it into a teardrop shape. And now we are going to attach the petals. They should be overlapping each other. When you place the last petal, you should tuck the last petal underneath the first petal that you created. So it creates a nice effect like this. Take some darker purple chalk pastel and a brush and shade the flower to create dimension. To make the stem, take some lime green clay, roll it into a snake and cut into equal sized slices.
then shape those slices into long teardrop shapes. Once you've shaped them, assemble as shown. Using a ball tool and later a blending tool, I am blending in the seams to make it look like they're one piece. Once done, take your blade and try and take the piece off and place it onto the flower. Next, take some wire and dip it in a little bit of liquid clay and press it onto the center of the flower. Time to assemble! So we have two of the handles and the lid and you're going to take some female liquid polymer clay and glue the elements onto the flower. So like the teacup, the bottom of the sugar container are like leaves, but this time we're going to take lime green clay, shape it into a teardrop, and create a line indentation at the center. And I totally forgot to film this part, but I'm using this teacup as an example, but using the green leaf. Take some liquid polymer clay, and we're using that as a glue to attach our leaves onto the bottom and curve it. It should go all around the bottom of the sugar container and it should look like this. Then you're just going to bake it. For the teapot, we are going to need a larger teardrop and larger petals, but this time we're going to need eight of them. When assembling, we will have an inner layer made of four petals and an outer layer made of four petals as well. So once again, all of the petals should overlap each other. But when it comes to the last petal, you're going to tuck in that petal underneath the first petal that you placed. And for the rest of the four petals for the outer layer, you're going to place it where two petals meet. Then take a small ball of light pink clay and place it at the bottom of the teapot. Take once again some magenta chalk pastel and a brush and shade the teapot. For the handle, take some lime green clay, shape it into a snake once again, one side being thicker and create a C shape. And then take some liquid polymer clay and a wire and attach that onto the handle as shown. With a blending tool or a needle tool, I'm just creating some indentation for the detail of the handle. Once done, just bake it. For the spout, take some pink clay, roll it into a long teardrop, shape it into an S-ish, <laughs> and then cut off the tip. Then indent it with a ball tool to create the hole. And cut the other end. And once again, we are going to take a wire, use some liquid polymer clay, and attach it onto the thicker end of the spout, then bake. I made a smaller flower bulb for the top of the teapot, and now we can assemble. So place the smaller flower bulb on top of the teapot, and then attach the already baked handle and spout using liquid polymer clay onto the main body of the teapot. So similar to the sugar container, the bottom part of the teapot will be made out of a circle of leaves. 
So once again, just create some leaf shapes and attach it with liquid polymer clay to the bottom of the teapot like so and bake. Once everything is baked, we have Alina's complete flower tea set. And using acrylic paint, I painted some flower motifs, but feel free to also paint anything you'd like on them. You just need to glaze them and then you're done. Woohoo! As a bonus, I also made the Tooth Fairy bag and the cupcake that Bibble got at the end of the movie. And that's the end! Thank you guys so much for watching and if you have any food in Barbie movies that you want to learn how to recreate, let me know and have a wonderful day and take care! Bye!